Been having a lot of out of body experiences recently. Um, being able to ask for reject is something that I feel is really advanced. People that talk about it nonchalantly, like, oh, I ask for reject all the time, I don't believe those people at all. I've been practicing Tantra for damn near 10 years, and uh, only, only in this last week I've been able to really do it uh, consciously <laughs> from a kind of half asleep state. So, um, I've written a couple just little diary entries, sort of, uh, from what I've uh, felt the last couple, like, week or so. So I thought I'd, I'd read them for you guys, just uh, as, some e as some easy content that I could put out for you guys that's interesting and let you guys know what's been going on with me. Okay, so, so uh, yeah, because I'm lazy, I'm just going to read the Facebook post for you guys. Okay, so... Going out of your body is the weirdest fucking feeling. I was never interested in astral travel. It just happened after practicing Tantra for so long. It feels so weird to have a second set of arms and legs that you're controlling with your mind without moving your physical arms and legs. It takes a fuck ton of concentration and I don't believe the 99% of people who talk about astral projection because it's an extremely, extremely high occult attainment and requires you to literally have the concentration of a Zen monk. Everything becomes self-effulgent as you move from the sphere of the sun and moon into the sphere of the self-luminous astral light. Everything just glows of its own accord. It's really difficult to orientate yourself as you enter into the ethers and there's a brief period of just darkness and chaos until you begin to set your mind to what you're doing. In Buddhism, the astral plane is called the Zyre Realm. So basically, the devas and lesser beings who live there are able to generate their desires from their mind and live lives of pleasure. I almost feel, or uh, I could add, or that they're caught in their karma and, and, and uh, they're, they're not able to do it consciously and they're kind of stuck in this like in kind of nebulous purgatory. I almost feel like the devic form of existence is more natural to the general theme of a life in the universe than being human is. We are animals co uh, compared to them, quite literally, evolutionarily speaking. Most of the time when I consciously go from a half-asleep asleep, uh, state to projecting out of my body, it's like the bindu in my head that I usually see as a distant vision of places, people, and things opens up and swallows my whole aura, and I pull myself out of my body and enter into a body of dreams. It's hard to remain stable and lucid during all of this, and it seems just like with waking life that my brain, question mark, goes on autopilot at times and I stop being perfectly lucid. However, certain situations or experiences seem to provoke me to become more or less lucid, and I'm recently even being able to communicate with these beings that live there. And a few times I was in such a high state of being that I actually pulled some literal Buddha shit and taught Dharma to the gods. You can read about that in my my video uh, called "Liberating the Elves That Live in the Sun." I'm very didn't, I'm very new to this qu question mark in this life, and although this whole process is seamless and intuitive, I've yet to really play around with being in control of going between the realms and the desire realm, Kamaloka, and I'm not sure what else the form realm, Rupaloka, formless realm, or a Rupaloka are about. The vast majority of secret Buddhism, Vajrayana, is about building palaces and mandalas in your mind and entering into them. And and deities, building your mind as a deity also, I'd add. So just by doing these basic practices, it starts to train your mind to operate on the desire realm. And creating enlightening expressions in the form of these mandalas to teach the Dharma and carry out the four tantric activities pacification, magnetization, subjugation, and increase on wandering beings in order to cultivate them towards enlightenment psychologically. Of course, nobody told me this when I began practicing Tantra because probably Tibetans don't very have high expectations of what Westerners are capable of attaining. Tantric Buddhism has really prepared me for the level of being that I exist on now. It shows how reality truly exists shows how to not get caught up in the illusions of the lower realms and our lower sense of desires and our alienated sense of, of apparent individualism. It shows you how to transform your mind into an enlightened deity form for the sake of liberating all those precious little creatures in samsara and in those realms. 
It accomplishes this merely by giving you a set of sadhanas and theory to think about and practice. After you do it for about ten years like me, you end up transforming into Grim Tara to teach Dharma to the elves in Kamaloka. It does it not just by teaching Dharma as a theory, but by programming your head with the truth of how phenomena truly exist, and how to not get caught in our own delusions, and act righteously and morally at all times for the sake of self and others. All these people who are just trying to jump into the astral plane, LOL, good luck, bro, have fun with your untrained mind being fucked with the machine elves like that stoner nerd Terrence McKenna. Bottom text. <laughs> okay, um, this one was from yesterday. Astro projected again this afternoon. Didn't partic encounter anything particularly of note, but I'm getting the dynamics down better, so hopefully I'll be able to te teach people how to stay out of their body and what to do with yourself when you're in Kamaloka. It, it, my main thing, like, it, it's it's so difficult to to stay there. Like, you really need to have a lot of energy and uh, prana, and you really need to be concentrated to in order to stay there without without interrupting what you're doing. Sometimes more than others. Sometimes it lasts for hours, but most of the time when I do it consciously instead of uh, rather rather than like in the middle of the night, um, it, it's um, it, it's really tricky. So there, there's floating around between the various fields of visions, and then there's actually literally touching down on another world and feeling fully lucid and controlled, no etheric fogginess or shit like that. The feeling of passing from the foggy ethers into an actual other world is indescribable. It's like passing through a wall of vibration or something, and you see and feel it all over your body. I really need to get it. I really need to get back to where I was meditating for hours a day, so my awareness is more stable. Yeah, no shit. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here was one from a week ago, which was really powerful. Okay, so spent like literally two hours straight astro rejecting this afternoon, and I remember having a bunch of conversations with the people in Kamaloka about life. It's weird because in that realm, it's like. It's it's like the your mind your memory is uh, on a higher I don't I don't know it's so weird like they, they like everyone like they know you they know your mind they know your memories they they can speak English they it, it's just it's so strange it's like your mind like merges and becomes one with them but anyway spent literally like two hours straight astro projecting this afternoon I remember having a bunch of conversations with people in Kamaloka about life. I remember crying hysterically because the beings in higher planes are just so sweet and innocent and intelligent and charming, and humans in Kali Yuga just seem like a bunch of miserable evil fucks compared to them, which is probably why when most people try to go to these realms, they see these beings as shadow creatures and other silly bullshit that's merely a reflection of their own inner ugliness. I remember almost swimming through the ethers in sight of this neon glowing fractal thing that looked like a kid's playroom or something you would see in that movie Enter the Void. I remember them creating actual video games that I was playing, one of them was Tetris, it was like some kind of Tetris game, I swear to god. I remember talking about the Dharma to some guy in a burgundy robe, I remember briefly encountering what I felt was a yaksha who didn't like me. I told him, that's okay, you don't need to like me. It's hard for me to define exactly what astral projection means, because it can be so similar to hypnagogia and lucid dreaming. To me it means that your whole aura surrounding your subtle body becomes energized and you're capable of literally and fully, uh, of being literally and fully lucid like it feels you are actually flying out of your body. And there's no loss of continuity of your consciousness between the waking consciousness and the quote unquote second consciousness. It also helps as a tantric adept that I'm able to, uh, in this state, to transform the elemental nature of the astrolite into making myself into a deity form. And I've practiced enough mantras that I, I can accomplish the various magical effects with them to accomplish magnetizing, pacifying, subjugating, or increasing activities. At one point I was being spooked by the elemental creatures there, so I transformed into my protector, Achala, and they all turned into their normal forms, like cutesy little gnomes and shit. Very weird. It seems like they, 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 uh, these creatures there, they... It really depends on the type of, uh, I don't want to say human, the, the, the type of being that, the kind of adept that goes there, like... I think most humans that, that use psychedelics to go there and shit, um, 
it almost seems like you know giving a monkey like human potion for five minutes like uh, it would be amusing but it's like that's all that it is to, to you know to you for if a monkey was to become human for five minutes it would like be amusing but if a monkey was to evolve in, into a human uh, somehow and be able to talk on that level, then you would treat them a little bit differently. And I feel that that's the difference between doing this with psychedelics and evolving via Tantra and and going into the realm like that. But anyway, um, literally spent all afternoon in, vari in various bardos while projecting consciously flying around and actually talking to the beings there. I remember when I was bawling like a baby to them because everyone on Kali Yuga Earth sucks so much compared to them. They teased me and they said I would probably get bored with it, which uh, probably probably true. I don't know how to teach people to do this shit yet. All I can say is practice Tantra for years and you will release tons of latent energy from your body and start to form the subtle body and depth of meditation needed to travel the higher planes. So, um, let's see, do I have any more little recent uh... okay I have one more had the most bizarre experience in a hypnagogic state after doing my sadhana for an hour and lying down with the goddess flames licking up and down my spine not even sure how to describe this so it was like I was talking to little apparitions of entities who appeared in sort of dreamlike bubbles in my mind and I could hear them speaking to me, and I was speaking to them also, in my mind. Appearing in little spheres that almost seemed like soap bubbles which had visions inside of them. Only rarely have I, rarely have I experienced clairaudience, and actually I've been able to hear these lesser devas or whatever creatures actually speaking to me and communicating with them. They suggest that I made a video or something about the capacity to do what was being done by communicating with them. Something about infinite potential energy in space or something. Sorry guys, I forgot what they told me. I need to keep a dream log, uh, a vision log near my, near my fucking bed. I seem to be able to influence the little dream bubbles with visualizations or something. Uh, and something about the whole process has to do with the nod sound of uh, consciousness which is in the ear. That's something that I do remember very um, importantly. That uh, that uh, this this process was about was about the uh, the the nod sound in in the ear. Uh, I wish I could remember more, but that's about it, unfortunately. So as I keep going with the, my little astral travels, I'll uh, I'll be sure to keep keep like oh, maybe I'll make a series of like you know astral projection uh, dream logs or something like that. <laughs>